Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw wet fur in graphite. Now I'm going to take a section of this brown bear tutorial that I created for my Patreon channel for this video. Now the first step for me is I like to map in my main lights and darks. So what I'm doing is I'm using graphite powder and an eye makeup applicator just to hint at the main shapes that I see. Now I'm not trying to make my darkest values as dark as they're going to be with the graphite powder. I'm going to do all of that with my graphite pencils. But the use of the graphite powder at this stage, as you can see now, is it's really helped to break up that white paper and enabled me to focus on the shapes so I can therefore more accurately follow my reference photo. Now when drawing wet fur in any medium, it can get quite overwhelming. There's a lot of fur that potentially overlaps in the way that it groups together it can create some very unique shapes. So all I'm focusing on here is the shapes that I see. I'm not necessarily thinking about the fact that I'm drawing fur. Now I know that may sound a little strange, but when we start to imagine it as fur, our brain starts to think that we know more of what it should look like, and we start in some cases making it look fluffier. Now what happens there is that fur will not resemble that wet look, which is what we're going for for something like this. So it's something to be very aware of throughout the drawing process. Now the next stage here is I start to work with my graphite pencils and I'm reinforcing the darker shapes that I see. Now what this is enabling me to do as well is also isolate more of the lighter clumps of fur. Now wet fur, it has that exaggerated bright highlight and dark shadow. So high contrast is what helps to make this look wet. If we don't have our shadows dark enough or our highlights bright enough, then the fur is going to look softer and therefore drier. So the high contrast is really important. Now I talk about contrast in all videos here on YouTube and of course thoroughly on Patreon. This is what makes the artwork look three dimensional. But as I layer here, this is where I build up my contrast gradually. So you'll notice that I am not jumping in with my darkest 9B pencil first. I'm still building up my layers in stages. Now where you will potentially get really bright highlights on the wet fur, if you do have a highlight that looks really light, then you can leave the white of the paper showing. Now in most cases you won't have to do that, but if there is an extreme really bright light source, then the white fur might potentially be even more reflective. So leaving the white of the paper showing means that you can take that pressure off yourself knowing that you've got your lightest value in because there's no graphite there at all. If you then need to darken your highlights later, you can do so very easily. Now again, look at how I'm really focusing on the shapes. Now once I've got those basic shapes in, I can reinforce them and correct them as I come in with more of my darker graphite. Now what I want to be making sure of as well is that I'm still adding in fur detailing, but that I'm not making the edges of the clumped wet fur too fluffy. Now in the next couple of minutes you'll see that actually that did happen to this section of fur. I just started to make some of the edges look a little bit soft and fluffy. So I had to go back in with my pencils to correct that. Now the wonderful thing about working with graphite in the way that I've layered here in stages is that we can come back in with our erasers and remove that graphite very easily. And you'll see that shortly when I start working with my Tombow Mono Eraser for the highlights. Now you'll also notice that I start working on some of the sections of fur at the top and then I move down to the bottom. This again just helps for me to not focus on one area for too long and start to become stressed with that one section of fur. I'm all about trying to make it as easy as I can mentally so that we can then work more efficiently with the pencils. If I start to become overwhelmed, I'll sit back in my chair and I'll think, right, what do I need to do first? And I'll break it up into more stages. The more layers that I add in terms of how I look at that reference photo and maybe work what's closest to the skin first or leaving my highlights and then working down from there just means then that I can really break this up into even more processes. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to make any mistakes. In all of my tutorials on Patreon, because I upload everything in real time with a voiceover while I'm drawing, if I do create a pencil stroke or do a layer that I don't like, I always show how to fix it. I don't cut any of those sections out of my videos. The reason being, the mistakes that happen, they are what actually make us better artists. So if we create a mistake and then we know how to fix it, that's information that we've gained that we can put forward to the next project. Every single time I create a mistake, it's that learning opportunity where we can then improve our drawing skills. 
Now one question regarding the eraser techniques that I'm asked is that the Tombow Mono Eraser doesn't really seem to lift the graphite off the paper. Now as you can see here, this is the eraser that I am using and it lifts that graphite beautifully. It's able to create a range of highlights depending on how I'm using it. Some of them look brighter, some of them look a little darker, and it's just because of the technique of using this, but it's also about how the graphite has been applied. If I'd have used heavy layers, more pressure on the pencil, this eraser is going to have a much harder time to lift that graphite off the surface. So if you're using a Tombow Mono Eraser and you're finding that it's not working in the way that you would like, it might just be that the way the graphite has been applied is not quite correct. So the layering process with graphite is something that I focus all of my Patreon tutorials on. All of those step-by-step -step tutorials cover that thoroughly. Now I have a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in graphite. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But one of the things that I talk about there is the importance of pencil technique and that also would be the same for a razor technique. So I want to be focusing on three main things, the fur length, the fur thickness and fur direction. Now as you can see here, with this fur being wet, it does clump together so the fur direction is more gradual. You maybe don't have quite so many directional changes as you would if the fur was dry. However, it still really does curve in different directions so it's something to pay attention to. Each clump of fur is more gathered together but that therefore does need to still move in the right way in order to build up the three-dimensional shape of the face. The fur direction isn't random, it follows the underlying bone and muscular structure. So for instance, where those larger clumps of wet fur start just below the eye, if I'd have raised those up too much or made them too straight, my pencil strokes were not quite right, then I'm not going to hint at where the jaw meets the cheek. I'm going to completely change the anatomy of the face. So the fur direction is super important. Now the length of the pencil strokes or eraser strokes is of course determined by how long that pencil or eraser is in contact with the surface. The longer that's in contact, the longer your line is going to be, but we want to be using the right amount of pressure. If we adjust the pressure, you're going to get a range of thin or thicker lines. You're also going to get a very varied look with the erasers that you're using. You don't want to have a very sudden start and stop point, so the pressure that you apply at the beginning and end of your strokes are really important. So the last one, the thickness of your pencil strokes is determined by how you move the pencil, how you hold the pencil, how sharp or how blunt the lead is, the amount of pressure that's applied. All of those things are going to be used at the same time but as a varied amount depending on the effect of the fur texture you're trying to create. But as you can see here I'm always looking to reinforce the fur direction along with the contrast. Now the one last thing I want to mention about that, and this goes to any fur texture, wet or dry, is the way that the, the placement of the highlights and shadows isn't random. So they do determine as well as the fur direction, that underlying bone and muscular structure. If you make a highlight or a shadow in the wrong place, let's say around the eye for example, you might make the eye socket look taller than it should be, therefore you're changing the shape of the skull. So all of these things need to be incorporated and thought about with all of the drawing processes. Now I mentioned in this video that I had to come back in and correct how fluffy some of this fur looked. It was taken on a little bit more of a drier appearance. Now to fix that, all I've done is come back in with my graphite pencils, my darker graphite pencils, and I'm now just tidying up the edges. I'm making things look a little more harsh. Now this is something that I don't naturally do because most of the time the fur that I'm drawing is dry but knowing the difference in texture and just that it did have to have a little bit more of a tidier edge to it it's just something that I had to take these extra couple of minutes to do. As soon as I did that this fur now looks grouped more clumped together I can add my last layer of highlights and then this area here was complete. Now when I say complete, I mean complete enough that I can move on to the area next to it. So this I would say is about 80-90% done. Once I'd got all of the bearing, that's again when I would come back in and refine those final details, maybe adjust more of my shadows and my highlights, do the things that really take that drawing to the next level. But I always like to get a section about 80% done so that I know it looks like that photograph I'm working from and therefore I could easily leave the drawing as it is for this day and then come back to it the following day and I'm already feeling motivated to get back to it because it's looking like that animal. 
Now the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video could be transferred to any other animal if it was a lighter coat. So let's say you were drawing a yellow Labrador that had just had a swim and that fur on the chest was longer, more grouped together. It would be very similar to the texture of the fur on the side of the face here, but your values might need to be a little bit lighter. But pay very close attention to that reference photo because even though you've got a lighted coloured fur, you would still have quite a few darker sections with those shadows. The wet fur is only going to look wet if you've got that highlight and shadow next to it. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, if you could give it a like and a thumbs up, I'd be very grateful. It makes a huge difference to my channel. And I also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you are interested in drawing along to this bear or any of my other real-time step-by-step tutorials, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. If you've got any art-related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.